everybody, welcome to Crafty Ames Workshop. And guess what I have planned today? We are going to make little um, four leaf clover earrings. Or they don't have to be earrings, you can make them into um, magnets or a charm for a necklace, whatever you want to do. Um, the reason we're doing this today is because St. Patrick's Day is mine and my husband's anniversary. We'll be married 24 years and I always want to do something a little bit special for the, the two things. For St. Patrick's Day just because I just found out I'm Irish for one thing. Two, mainly because I have um, my our anniversary this t is that day and so it's just a special day for my husband and I and so I just want to share a little clay craft that um, that I hope to be wearing this week so what you're gonna need is some black clay some red clay just a teeny tiny bit and some green clay I'm using mint or that's the color it looks. I can't remember what the actual color is, but you guys can pick whatever greens that you want to. Um, and you'll find out why I'm using a light color as we go along. You're going to need, you don't have to have these. Um, it's just easier and I have them on hand, so I'm going to use them. Uh, but you're going to need cutters. You're going to need a round one and a heart one. Um, you're also going to need a razor blade. Um, a lot of this probably all of this stuff I found at Hobby Lobby or some kind of craft store. Um, you're going to need some bacon bond. You're going to need some tools. Um, and you don't have to have these either. This is just optional. Um, this one has a round ball on, the, on it. I don't know if you can see that. And then on this end it's a flat. This is not something you have to have. Just something I used to make the, the item a, a little bit quicker and it's more helpful. You're going to need a needle tool or a needle, whatever. Um, you're going to need a couple dry paint brushes and I just use a little teeny tiny one. Well, they're not teeny tiny, but they are smaller, not a huge one. You're going to need a roller. This is a, one of those acrylic rollers, but you can use a a plastic cup or a rolling pin or like I've got a I think it's from Play-Doh or something I don't know I got it from somebody um, you're also going to need some powder past or I'm sorry uh, soft pastels um, and these have all kinds of colors in them what color we're going to use today is I'm going to be using the um, I don't know, the light green, the dark green, and then the middle green. I don't know what these colors are called, but... And then we're also going to be using these two yellows here. I need a paper towel to keep your tools clean. As you can see, I've already got that dirty. Um, and then a wet wipe. I'm using the Clorox disinfecting wipes, but you can use a baby wipe or whatever you have on hand. And then it's helpful to have a clay... Um, tile, a clay tile, um, and this one's smooth. You can buy those at the hardware store. Um, and I think that's it. So let's get started. Okay, you always want to make sure everything is cleaned off really good, and you're going to need to do this throughout the process of making your item because if you don't, especially with the lighter colors, you're going to get those colors mixed in with that and make a mess. So just try, if you can, to always keep everything clean. Your tools, your surface you're working on, um, and your clay. So also your hands. That's another thing to keep clean. That is my biggest problem, keeping my hands clean so I don't get colors one color onto another color because it messes it all up. The very first thing that you need to do is make sure your clay is conditioned. Mine, this one is not conditioned. It's a little bit, but this one's a little bit on the uh, old dry side. I use the Fimo and I use uh, 
the Primo Sculpey. This particular one is the Fimo. And right now, they usually come a little bit drier, I think, than the, the Sculpey Primos do. So, you on all the clay, no matter what brand you have, you're going to have to condition it, which means just to... Uh, work it. Just massage it, get it warmed up, and it's going to crumble on you if it's as dry as this one is. But don't worry about it. Just keep working with it. Use a pasta machine if you have one of those that's dedicated to clay, and eventually it's going to get soft. So like right now, this one's already starting to soften up a little bit. So let me go ahead and get these conditioned a little bit, and I'll come right back. I like using my hands just because it warms up the clay and it just makes it more movable. If you use the pasta machine, which I do have, I, but I just, if I'm just doing a small piece like this, I'd rather just use my hands. But the pasta machine can break it down a whole lot quicker. Um, but sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it does stay crumbly a little bit longer so eventually I do have to get it in my hands anyways to get it warm at least that's been my experience if any of you use do use clay and work with it if you guys got any tips that'd be great but look at that that clay's getting on my hands that's why you got to keep your hands clean with other colors and because uh, they will actually go on to the other clay Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let me roll it in ball. Okay. I'm going to cut this into four sections. Take one of your sections, roll it in a ball, push it down, use your roller if you want to or just use your hands. Take your heart push down. If you have space, do it again. I'm going to take my razor and just bring it up. Kind of get the little extra pieces hanging. into a ball. I guess I could have just kept the ball and just cut them. I wasn't thinking. Just made one big ball and cut it up. Do that guys. Do that. I'm not thinking today. Get it the thickness that you want and cut again. You're just making four hearts. Make sure clay is you're not cutting into the other heart and it's not getting on the edge of the clay there. So you have a full heart. And don't worry if you kind of mess up the heart because you're going to be um, molding it a little bit more anyway. So it's not going to matter. Okay, so we have four hearts. So like this one I messed up on. It's got a little nub right there. I don't know if you can see. Anyways, um, I'm just going to fix it with my finger. But really, you don't even have to do that because you're going to end up 
molding it anyways. So the first thing we're going to do is get your pastels out and a brush and you're going to use the lighter green, the middle green out of these three. I'm using this one. I'll probably They're probably not in order so don't worry about it. And all I'm going to do is paint over or whatever you want, however you want to call it. Just go over it. Okay. Now keep in mind like that little spot that I have it's going to show up a little bit more, so you can smooth it out. Make sure you get the edges real good. Okay, and then do that to all four. Same color. Don't change the color yet. Now remember, if you touch it while you're doing this powder, sometimes it'll take the powder off, so you'll have to redo it. So just keep that in mind. Now you're probably wondering why I'm using the pastels over paint, or why don't I just use the color clay that I want. You can do that if you want to, it's not a big deal. I like doing it this way because it gives it a, a softer look. Um, and in the end, you can opt to leave it like this and use just a matte varnish on it, which I don't have, or you can use the glossy varnish, which I do have. But I don't know, I just think the, the, um, pastels give it a soft look. And so that's why I'm doing it this way. Um, it also gives it some little shadowing where paint wouldn't do that and your clay won't do that unless you purposely, somehow if you're a professional, which I am not, if you're a professional clayer you may be able to figure out how to get all of the shadowing in there. But I just like to use the powder. If you have, um, if you don't have pastels and you've got like some eyeshadow that's green, or if you want your clover to be a totally different color, that's up to you. Like Bob Ross, make happy little clovers. Okay, so now we're going to use a darker green. And we're going to do just the edges and kind of bring it up a little bit on the sides because you want the middle to stay lighter than you do the edges. So the edges are going to be a little bit darker. Okay, and then on the very tip down here, you're going to make that dark. Well, you can if you want. I mean, the, uh, eventually I'm going to mess that up, but I don't know. You may do this and say, no, I don't want to do what you're doing, Amy. Let's, let's just keep it, and that's fine. You do what you want. Okay, so that's one. Let me go ahead and do the rest. Okay, now we're going to work on the base of the earring where the decoration is going to go, the clover. Make sure this is in a ball. Okay, just stick it down there and push. This should be about the size of a penny. Um, if you don't have a cutter, all you're doing is flattening it with your thumb. It's probably going to be, well, on my thumb, my, I got fat thumbs. Um, you're just going to make it probably as thick as your thumb once you push down on it. Let's see. Let me smooth it out. Not that it really matters, but 
Okay. Okay. So I've got my base. Making sure I can take it off. If you want, push down the, the sides because they're probably going to have some little uh, hair type clay sitting there. So you want to take that off. And then go ahead and put a little dollop of just the tiniest bit of the, this is old, an old one, but it's called Sculpey Bacon Bond. And just put a little dab of that on there because I'm not sure. This is just to ensure that these pieces of the clover, the little hearts here, are going to stick. And I'm just kind of rubbing, going to rub it a little bit and tap it all over. That's just to ensure stickability. So we're going to stick one on there. Two. Three. Four. So, can you see that? And then, I'm going to, just to see if it fit, pick up each individual one and kind of curl it if you want to. I, this is my little design, what I'm wanting to do. I'm going to curl the edges just a little bit. I'm doing while I'm doing that is kind of pushing it towards one another so that it it sticks then let's see then I'm gonna use my little ball tool if you or some camera if you don't have one of these just find something I mean you can use maybe the end of a really thick thick um, paintbrush or the end of your highlighter. I mean, your tools do not have to be the special ones that we buy at the store. You can make your tools out of what you have. And then we're just going to push it down a little bit. See, I'm using just my highlighter to do that with. I'm going to use that to kind of give it a little bit more make sure they're kind of working in together. The edges are touching. Now you can leave it like that or, which I'm going to do, I'm going to take my needle tool and I'm going to bring, go from the middle and go up just a little bit. giving it texture and also it kind of brings up that lighter color that the clay actually is which I like so you have a little bit of dark and you have a little bit of light okay and then you might have some little things in there and that's okay you do not have to do what I just did but, here's that. So now I'm going to use another paintbrush, a different paintbrush. Make sure it's cleaned off. Make sure it's dry. Okay, and I'm going to use that lighter yellow right there. And I'm going to put that right in the middle. And then I'm going to use the um, darker yellow next to it. I'm also going to put that in the middle. After I've done that, I'm going to use the other brush that we used already and just 
go around the clover again just to make sure that nothing has been rubbed off making sure it's nice and shadowed and dark where you want it to be dark I like making the clover out of hearts be just because of my anniversary it just makes it more about the love aspect of our anniversary I'm lucky in love. I'm going to put some down in the middle right there too. And then you're probably also going to want to take a look at the other end, the other side. Because we did not color that side, so you probably got some light color going on right there so just to make sure everything's touched we've got it the color we want yep this signifies how lucky and love we are or blessed really I'm blessed to have a the husband that I have. He's a great guy. I'm going to go ahead and put a hole right here. My clovers are, or my clover is showing a little bit of black there, which is fine. That's great. Because what I need to do is put a hole where I'm going to be able to put my jewelry, jewelry piece. Or you can make these into magnets, necklace charms, book charms, whatever you want. Um, so after you do that, don't forget the little hole. If you do forget to do the hole, you can put a hole in it when it's already been cooked and ready to go. Um, just get um, a little drill piece and kind of twist it until it gets in there real good and makes a hole. Okay, so now we're going to do red. Let me wipe this off. Okay, get your little teeny tiny red piece of clay, and we're going to make a little teeny tiny heart. And that is going to go in the center of the clover. Now, of course, if you don't have an anniversary of any sort on this day, and you don't want to put a heart, you don't have to. I've seen people who've put um, ladybugs right there in the middle. I think that was a really cute idea. So do that. I'm doing the heart because of what it signifies. So what I'm going to do is cut this ball in half. And because I think that's still going to be a little big, I'm going to cut it in half one more time. So, make, make these two halves into a ball. Okay, and then you're going to take your half, one half, and you're going to just roll one end of it to where it looks like a teardrop. Okay, do the same thing to the other ball. Roll just one end till it makes a little teardrop. And you're going to take both of those. Hopefully it will stay focused if I go closer. And you're just going to take the two big ends together and the two little ends together. And you're just going to pinch them. That's the easiest way I know to make a heart this little. Okay. And kind of pat it down if you can. And I want my end to be nice and pointy. Okay. Then take just a little, the tiniest drop of bacon bond that you can put it right there in the middle oops make sure your hole is up on the top 
You don't want to use a lot of this because once it's cooked, it's really hard to, I mean, you, you don't want it to be visible because it kind of has a color to it. So I'm just using, I had a little hair of bacon bond there, so I'm trying to wipe it off. Okay, there's my little heart. And I'm just going to use my little ball tool again and kind of push it down. And that way that gets rid of the little seam that you have for, for the two of those. And then take your needle tool again and kind of make sure that that middle is is dented pretty good so you can see it okay I think that's perfect now just use your little needle tool if you want I'm gonna texture the heart a little bit for one thing it helps push it down some and it just gives it texture. If you want it to stay nice and smooth, keep it smooth. You don't have to do this. Okay, I'm going to check again. Make sure all the shadowing is still there for the green because it looks like some of it's come up. That's the only bad thing that comes with using the pastels is it does rub off if you're not watching. Let me put a little bit of red powder on that, Hold on. or red pastel, just on the heart itself. Eh, better be careful. Okay. All right, so there it is. Make two of those. I have another one I made. I, it kind of broke. But there it is. I had to fix it with the bacon bond. I haven't baked it yet. So um, when you see, when I come back, I'm going to have both of these baked and you can see what they look like together. Okay, everybody, here they are. Take pictures of them where you can see it better. But, anyways, that's what they look like without being glazed. And there's just the size. So, you know what, those could be buttons too. But, this is the one that we made. And this is the one that I made earlier. Um, and this one I cracked right here. I don't know if you can see that. Right there, let's see, right there, there's a crack. Um, and I just used that glue that um, bacon bond and it you can't hardly see it I mean it's there there's a line but it's not quite as bad if I had smoothed it out a little bit better it would have looked better but I don't think you can tell so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use which you've seen in other videos I love the diamond flecto varathane varnish uh, and this one's the gloss it is the best so far that I have found to put on well to use on everything I use it on my journal pages and I use it on my clay I use it on making journals so let me go ahead and put this on there okay I'm just gonna use a little paintbrush I'm just gonna paint it The only problem is you got to watch out for the little bubbles and you can take a straw and just kind of blow out the bubbles. I've done that before. You can tap it and see if that will help. What I did is I put it, this was the Fimo and the, um, the Primo Sculpey. They're mixed together. Well, no, they're not mixed together. I just used the Primo for the black and the red, and then the green is the, the Fimo. 
but um, I just put it in the oven on this this particular tile and I put this cardboard or cardstock underneath it and then I also made a tent with cardboard and put it over top and that way it wouldn't get that way it won't get um, burnt because that's one of the problems with baking clay is that it easily gets burnt so you do have to cover it so you can use cardstock cardboard um, aluminum foil and all you're doing is you're tinting it making it just a little tint right above it and that way the heat won't get to it and burn it I have an old oven that may be why I don't know I don't know if the newer ovens burn but oh make sure you get in the middle here I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the back too I think this one the second time around looks better than the first time around so you may want to make a couple of these, several of these, before you find the ones that you think are, are good. Um, and I bake these for 16 minutes. Um, just read the, fo the follow the instructions that are on your packaging and use that to go by. Um, and so that is it. I will get some pictures up for you when I put the... Uh, the jewelry parts on there and uh, take pictures so you can see what it looks like with it dry and um, as earrings. Alright you guys, you have a great day and a great St. Patrick's Day or as I like to call it, Irish Love Day and, um, and my anniversary with my husband and you guys have a great day to do some crafts let me know what you're doing, and if you do this one, I'd like to see some pictures if you've got them. Alright, you guys have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share and um, comment below if you have anything you'd like me to do. Alright, see you guys later. Bye!